Rethink X's Adam Dore asks the simple question, how much should we invest in humanoid robots? And the answer is basically whatever it takes. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you just mere hours before I leave for Vancouver for the Fully Charged show. And I'm actually even more excited to go than I was previously because the Rivian R3 will be revealed there. So within just a couple of days, I should have an exclusive first look at the R3. Definitely subscribe to my channel so you can check that out when it comes out. It'll be out Friday or Saturday. So of course I'm super excited and I'm excited to see all of you there who are in Vancouver when I'm there. I'll be on a couple of panels on Friday Friday, I'm on one with Sandy Monroe, so definitely don't miss that if you're in the area. All right, without further ado, here's Rethink X's post by Adam Dore. How much should we invest in humanoid robotics? And there's a calculator, so we can actually run some numbers ourselves. So we'll get there in just a minute. Note that it's dated the September 4th, which is today as I record this. Got a nice little picture there by Adam Dore. What if it were possible for a country to increase the per capita productivity of its economy by a factor of two, three, five, or even 10 in the span of just a decade? What what level of investment would that kind of result justify? That, of course, is a very reasonable question. And of course, it's related to things that Tony Saba, the founder of Rethink X, has said over the years about a super abundant future. So this is definitely tied to that. Anyway, Adam attempts to answer this speculative question throughout the rest of the blog. Committing just a single digit percentage of GDP to the deployment of humanoid robotics would quickly yield a superabundance of goods and services, resulting in a staggering level of overall prosperity. Investing in robot labor could be one of the greatest uses of capital in human history, outperforming similar investments in electricity, running water, and education. That is a pretty big statement. Any investment decision is shaped by three basic considerations. One, what are the expected returns or the ROI? Two, what are the available alternatives? And three, what is the cost of inaction? So continuing on with this article, of course, I will leave a link in the description so you can check it out and play with the calculator on your own time. Anyway, before we consider each of these questions, let's set the stage with a reminder of some of the striking facts about humanoid robots that we've noted in our previous posts. They will be manufacturable at less than $20,000 per unit at scale compared to the cost of $300,000 or more for raising a human child in a wealthy country. Yep, that's about right. It costs a lot of money to raise a kid. They will be built in days or hours not 18 plus years. They can be trained and retrained instantly via software download, not over days or weeks or months like humans. They will work up to three times more hours per day than humans. They will require only a tiny fraction of the supporting workplace expenditures that humans require. They can be redeployed instantly to perform any new task without the social or administrative friction of shifting roles or responsibilities. And they will perform at a totally consistent level of quality, never compromised by boredom, fatigue, illness, drugs, etc. And just as a tangential note, Scott Walter, Herbert Ong, Cern Basher, and I have started a company, Human Bots, and the point of the company is to create a future where humans and robots work together in harmony rather than in competition. So next, Adam asks the question of how do we determine the value of these robots? He says, let's go ahead and use the gross domestic product or GDP, even though it's a flawed metric. He's like, it's something that people understand and know. So we'll use that. Anyway, according to the National Center for Educational Statistics, the United States spends almost $1 trillion per year on primary and secondary education and an additional $700 billion on post-secondary education at colleges and universities. The country then spends $100 billion on workplace training. This $1.8 trillion annual investment in the U.S. workforce results in a GDP of $27.4 trillion. So you can see the ROI on training human beings, educating humans up from scratch. Even though it's very expensive, the ROI is actually very, very good for that. In greatly simplified terms, it could be considered a 1,500% ROI. Even though almost 40% of U.S. GDP returns to capital rather than to labor, the general relationship relationship between total investment in a society's education and training, i.e. its human capital, and the nation's total resulting productive capability clearly holds. Next, Adam notes that each working person in the labor force contributes an average of $98,000 to the country's GDP. That was interesting. I did not know that statistic. That may cause a bit of introspection on all of our parts, asking, are we actually being paid more or less than this average of $98,000 per year? That, of course, is your own private information, but that is a really interesting metric to 
measure your productivity versus the rest of the working population. Okay, so what about humanoid robots? Here is a simplified ROI calculator that does a bit of arithmetic based on a handful of parameters and puts the results into the context of today's GDP. In other words, how productive the economy of the US is in 2024. So I've already messed with this calculator a lot to try to make the situation worse, you know, to make the bots very expensive, last a very little amount of time and not work that much. And you can still see that the return on investment, even with these, you know, lower metrics, of a $50,000 robot that only lasts two and a half years, and there's only 10 million of them in the workforce, and the robot productivity is only 45% of human productivity, we're still getting a return on investment of 245%. So that is pretty impressive. So I'll return to the calculator in just a minute, but first let's finish the article. A quick play with the sliders shows that even if bots are fairly expensive, say $20,000 each over their lifetime, and only last four years before needing to be recycled, the US could nevertheless effectively double the size of its productive workforce for $840 billion for, per year. That's a lot of money, but that's doubling the workforce. And in doing so, boost its GDP by 60%, up to $44 trillion. Woohoo! That's obviously a huge amount of money to invest, but it's less than half of what the U.S. currently invests in human education and training. Next up, Adam looks at the longer term future when this is all more mature. At scale and maturity, we ought to expect humanoid robots to become much cheaper, last longer, and become considerably more productive per hour than human beings. When we dial in a cost of $5,000 each, that's pretty optimistic, but okay, a lifetime of six years and twice the productivity of a human being, we could see triple the effective size of the workforce with 330 36 million robots by investing just $280 billion each year. In doing so, this huge increase in productive capacity would boost GDP by 240%. Again, that $280 billion isn't a small number, but it's just 0.3% of the resulting new GDP of 93 trillion. That's a pretty crazy amount. Put another way, the $280 billion investment in humanoid robots yields 66 trillion in new productivity for an ROI of 23,500%. That is incredible. Then Adam notes, that's an economy with one bot for every person. Now imagine two, five, or even 10 robots for every person, never resting, never tiring, just working, producing. Go ahead and dial it into the calculator. Committing a single digit percentage of the GDP to deploying humanoid robotics would result in a super abundance of goods, services, and overall prosperity that is utterly staggering. Next, Adam asks, what are the available alternatives? It's difficult to imagine a better investment that societies can make over the next two decades than deploying deploying as many humanoid robots as possible. However, other investments will also be required to support robots, especially in energy. A rough calculation, assuming each robot consumes 10 kilowatt hours of electricity per day, shows that 100 million robots would need about 400 terawatt hours of electricity each year, or roughly 10% of today's total electricity consumption. So of course that seems like an insane number, but as Adam points out, the productivity gains from investment in humanoid robotics will directly translate into greater resources resources available for these other critical goods and services. Indeed, investing in humanoid robotics may well be the very best way to increase resources available for healthcare, education, and so on. The real question nations must ask themselves, and this is a very important question, is, is there an alternative investment that could double or triple our GDP over the next 15 years? And let me just point out that all of these robots are not going to come online at once, right? They will scale over time. And one of the things that robots can do once they exist is they can start to build the next generation of the power grid, right? They can build solar panels or windmills or fusion reactors or whatever the next generation of electricity generation are going to be. So they can actually help to build out the very grid that they are using, which means that they will be self-sustaining in a sense. Next, Adam asks the very important question that every politician in every nation should be thinking about right now. What are the costs and or consequences of inaction? As he admits the GDP is a flawed metric, nevertheless, it remains an incontrovertible fact that virtually all social indicators of well-being are strongly correlated with a society's capacity to produce goods and services. One of the best things we can do to give everyone a better quality of life is to make society more economically productive. With enough prosperity, virtually every problem is solvable, even our most formidable challenges like climate change and I would say power generation and things like that as well. The cost of failing to invest maximally in humanoid robotics would therefore be monumental as measured in lost opportunity to increase productivity, prosperity, and well-being, and the problem-solving capacity they represent. Rational policymaking ought to avoid such a disastrous outcome at all costs. 
And if that's not enough of a driver, furthermore, countries that fail to invest in humanoid robotics will also fall behind those that do, becoming losers in the race to comparative prosperity, and very likely faster than at any other time in human history. If a country like the United States were to fail to invest adequately in robotics, for example, it could find itself in 2040 with a GDP one-fifth the size of a rival that didn't make the same mistake. So this is basically a clarion call to all countries, invest as much as you can into to humanoid robotics. So as you might guess from the blog, how much should countries invest in humanoid robotics? The bottom line is that every country needs to go all in on humanoid robotics deployment, investing every penny they can muster starting right now. And I totally agree. The stakes are enormous and the returns on offer are so staggering as to nearly defy description. So I'm going to go back to the calculator in just a second, but I will also add on top of the humanoid robotics is, of course, the non-humanoid AI, the virtualized AI, the gigantic data centers that Tesla and Microsoft and Meta and Google and Apple and others are building out. Those are going to be massively important to the productivity of countries as well. And in fact, the two things go hand in hand, because at least right now, in order to teach these humanoid robots to do things, you need these massive data clusters to do all of the actual training because the bots themselves have relatively, you know, small processors and small amounts of memory and small amounts of power. So these giant clusters are the things that actually enable the training of these humanoid bots. And then the bots go out into the world and do physical things while the more cerebral things, the creative things, the programming things, all of that kind of stuff is done by virtualized artificial intelligence. In other words, ones that live in the cloud. So it's pretty obvious that by 2040, between virtualized and embodied AI, we're going to be looking at a very, very different world than we live in right now. And of course, any country that does not invest aggressively enough is going to get left behind and it's going to be really, really fast. Not over the course of five or six decades, but five or six years. All right, with that being said, let's look back at the calculator here. So currently what I've got is a very expensive robot at $50,000 in 2.5 years. And you can still see that the percent of GDP is only 0.72%, so not even 1%. And the GDP increase is 1.79. So it's not massive at this point, but let's start getting getting more reasonable numbers. So let's say 25,000 for the robot. And let's say, I think four years is pretty reasonable for a working robot. And currently let's just leave it at 10 million because I think we can do that by 2030 or so. We should be able to get 10 million of these robots. And I'm going to leave the productivity, uh, let's just call it 50%. We'll call it half of human productivity. So you can see that the return on investment is 784%. The investment is down to only 0.22% of GDP, which is basically nothing. And while the GDP increase is still only 1.79%, relative to the GDP, the cost of deploying these bots goes down substantially. Next, let's make one simple change and make it a factor of 10 more. So we have 100 million robots rather than 10. That's probably looking at 2035 to 2040 kind of time frame. But anyway, you can immediately see down here that the GDP increase is almost 18% now. Now, the investment versus the GDP is almost 2% of GDP, but you're also growing your GDP by almost 18%. That's a pretty crazy number. And of course, with that, the return on investment is 784%. All right, let's get a little more aggressive here. We're going to keep it at 100 million bots, but we're going to drop it to 15,000 per bot and raise the productivity to 80% of one human being. So again, I still think this is relatively conservative for, you know, 10 to 12 years from now. Anyway, as you can see, the return on investment is 2,600% now. The percent of the GDP we have to invest in these bots goes way down to 0.85%, and the GDP increase is almost 29%, 28.65%. So now we're starting to talk. We're really starting to increase the gross domestic product of the United States. And finally, let's look another five years into the future, so somewhere around 2040 or so, the cost of the robot is going to drop to say $10,000. The operational lifetime at a conservative guess is five years, although I think they could probably last twice that long. The workforce size will increase to 200 million and the productivity will become more than one human being. It'll be, I'm just still being pretty conservative at only 150% of one human, but still, you know, if it's working 24 hours a day, even if it's slower and by 2040, I don't think it will be, but even if it is, it's going to be more productive than a human. But look at this. Suddenly we've got a GDP increase of over 100% to $56.7 trillion of GDP. The investment versus the GDP drops down to 0.7% and the return on investment is 7,350%. So these are really, really staggering numbers. And these are things we could be looking at in about a decade and a half, the late 2030s, the early 2040s. And so I hopefully will still be alive at that point to see this. These will be absolutely crazy. And then of course, if you combine this with the virtualized AI in the form of data centers and things like that, 
we could be looking at a GDP that's well over a hundred trillion dollars or something. So we could be looking at approximately four Xing the current GDP in only a decade and a half or so. Those are pretty staggering numbers. And that's exactly what Adam Dorr and Tony Seba and others at Rethink X mean when they say a future of super abundance. All right, folks, what do you think about all of that? It's pretty astounding, isn't it? Definitely sound off in the comments and let me know. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, it really helps the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see many of you, my Canadian friends in Vancouver on Friday and all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.